What you may not realize is that there are over 5,000 varieties of potato. But if you're like many people, you've probably only cooked with two to three different kinds. Today, we'll learn why potatoes like this russet are so great for baking, mashing, and frying. And we'll learn why potatoes like this red bliss are great for roasting, stewing, and something like potato salad. All in all, we're going to be peeling, chopping, smashing, and examining because this is the big guide to potatoes. So I'm gonna start out by sorting all these potatoes. And the main distinguishing factor that you need to consider when choosing a potato is whether it's mealy or waxy. On this side, I'm putting the mealy potatoes. These are the potatoes that have a higher starch content. These are qualities that I look for in mashed potatoes and french fries. These starches swell up and expand when the potato is cooked. It also means that these potatoes have a lower moisture content. And it's that high starch, low moisture content that really makes for a super fluffy and airy potato. You can really see this process if you boil the potatoes. Once you get them boiling, the mealy potatoes expand and the starch swells. I think this really shows the benefit of a high starch potato. So let's take a look at some of the mealy ones. The classic Idaho russet. It's called a russet because of the color of its skin, which is this beautiful earthy brown. In fact, there are several types of russets, but to be called an Idaho russet, it has to be grown in Idaho. It's kind of like the champagne of potatoes. If you peel the skin back, you'll see a nice smooth flesh that has a little bit of a grainy looking texture because of the high starch content. It has a kind of an earthy flavor, a little bit like sweet dirt <laughs> in a good way. It takes up the flavor of whatever ingredients you add to it very well because that starch will just absorb everything. This is the potato from our boil test, the Upstate Abundance. For a starchy potato, the skin is on the thinner side but even though the skin is thin, they still do have deeper eyes, which is more indicative of a starchy or mealy potato. The eyes of potatoes are the little divots right here. If you leave your potatoes in a cupboard for too long, you'll see little roots start to grow out. That's where the plant is actually looking for nutrients. Oh. It's sweet and it's a little bit earthy. Very nice flavor. Anytime you see me eating a potato, trust me, it's been boiled. Do not eat raw potatoes. This potato would be great for something like potatoes cooked in a foil pack. The small creamy texture of them makes them cook evenly and they won't take as long as a larger starchy potato. This potato is from Maine. This is the Kennebec, which is named after a river that runs through the state. You'll see here that the flesh is bright white. You're usually leaning more towards the earthy flavor with the white flesh potatoes and the super buttery with the yellow. This is actually gonna give you a more distinguished, nuttier flavor than you would get from most of the mealy potatoes, which are relatively mild, but it'll still give you all those mealy, starchy qualities. This potato would be great for like a frittata, something where you want a little bit of texture in the bottom or mixed in with the egg, but you still want it to be soft and not have too much bite to it. Gold Rush Russet. The skin almost looks kind of like a honeycomb pattern or a gator tail, really cool. This is the true illustration of what starchy potato skin looks like. Not so smooth and pretty, but like rough and beautiful and brown and earthy. It looks like it just came out of somebody's garden. It has some chew to it and the potato itself is much milder in flavor. So it would be really great for a shepherd's pie. You've got all the starch that you need to hold it together mix it with some of your cream and egg yolk that would just make a super comforting and delicious dish. It's 
It's like so soothing just to like slice through a potato. Here is yet another type of russet variety, the Burbank russet. It's not as deep brown as some of the others, but it has beautiful defined eyes and a nice long shape that in my opinion, makes it absolutely perfect for French fries. And that is actually not just my opinion. McDonald's prefers Burbank russets for their fries. Talk all the you want about McDonald's. We all know their fries are the best. <laughs> I like mine to be light and fluffy on the inside and super crisp and golden on the outside, which makes these mealy Burbank russets perfect. And I know everybody's different. So if you actually like your French fry to have a denser texture, then you would probably want to use a waxy potato. So let's have a little fun with this. I'm going to make a batch of fries with two different potatoes. For our other batch of fries, I'm going to use a very common and well-liked waxy potato, the Red Bliss. A waxy potato like this Red Bliss is smooth, thinner skinned, and dense. The insides are sweeter and creamier. Compared to the mealy potatoes, these waxy ones have a smaller cellular structure with starch that is not as prone to swelling up. They hold their shape really well when cooking, which makes them an excellent choice for roasting or boiling. Compared to the mealy potatoes, these are lower in starch and have a higher moisture content. The higher moisture content means that these potatoes are much denser than the mealy ones. So I'm gonna cut these in the exact same way as we cut the Burbanks. We wanna make sure that everything is the exact same so that we can really just taste the difference in the flavor and the texture and not in size or anything. So the texture of the Red Bliss inside is very smooth. It doesn't feel as grainy as the interior of the russets. It's got a great size, so we'll still get some nice big fat fries out of it. Still starchy, starchier than I thought it would have felt. I don't know, the starch might be enough to get a crispy exterior, but we'll see. We've got to put it to the test first. So you may not know, but the best way to cook fries is the double fry. You cook them one time at a lower temperature, about 275, let them cool, and then fry them a second time at 375. So we cut our potatoes already. They've both been par cooked, and now we're gonna give it a second fry at 375 to get that golden, crunchy, crispy exterior. And while these are frying, let's talk about another type of fried potato. Who does not love potato chips? Here we have a few types of chips. You can really see the difference. We've got chips made with German butterball, purple Peruvian, and Kennebec. The German butterball actually have more of like a translucent look to them. It's super crunchy, but it's also like a very dense kind of texture. The purple Peruvian still has this absolutely beautiful bright purple color with little streaks of white inside. Mm and a really nice crispy crunch to it. And let's try our Kennebec. These actually have a darker brown to the fry, not as golden as the Butterball, but you still see some little peaks of translucent starch. And the texture on these is awesome. Not as hard and dense as the Butterball and still a little bit lighter than the Purple Peruvian. And the flavor is really nice. So what we're waiting for on this second fry is GBD, which is the kitchen term for golden brown and delicious. You can see a little bit of difference in the way they're frying up. You can almost see this russet French fries are getting like more of a light golden gradually, whereas the Red Bliss are going from pale to almost like brown much more quickly. The oil is the same temperature, all things being equal, it's just how the starch develops. Okay, our Red Bliss looks ready. GBD. These look absolutely gorgeous. They're both beautiful, don't get me wrong. But the color on the russets, there's something about it that just like makes me so happy. So while they're still hot, you wanna add a little salt. Get all that love in there. Now for the moment of truth. And can't forget, the ketchup and mayo. So our Red Bliss has more of a dark brown color, not that crispy, kind of like a softer exterior. Delicious. I mean, it's a fried potato. How can it not be delicious? The interior is 
denser, you don't see those air pockets, and you don't see that puffed out starch. Mmm. Uh-huh. Now that is much crunchier on the outside. Mmm. Especially the ends where the skin is. Oh, they're getting super crunchy. And you can see like the edges here are really pulling away from the interior. So you have a nice outline of crispy starch on the outside and a fluffy potatoey interior that has some little air pockets through. So it really lightens it up. Makes you feel less guilty about eating a bunch. You really can't go wrong with a fried potato of any sort. Both delicious, but very different in a lot of small ways. If you like the crunchy exterior, go for a russet, preferably Burbank. If you're going for flavor and a little bit of sweetness, go for the Red Bliss. Me personally, it's all about the russet. This is the banana fingerling, also known as Russian bananas. Not named for its flavor, but how it looks. It kind of looks like a banana and it kind of looks like a finger, I guess. <laughs> Similar to the way the Red Bliss felt, the skin is a little bit smoother than the russets and the interior is creamy looking yellow, super duper smooth. There's a lot more moisture on the knife also. There are tons of roasted fingerling recipes and one that I really like is this chive pesto roasted fingerling potato. Really complements the sweet flavor. It is really sweet. Yeah, I put a ring on this. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Here we have the pinto gold. Pinto means painted or speckled in Spanish. So it kind of looks like a pinto horse or a pinto bean. This is a new special variety of potato and it's so yellow. Wow. It looks so cool inside. It looks smooth and creamy. Hmm. Very rich in flavor. A couple dishes that this would be great for would be the grilled potato salad, which is here on Epicurious, as well as gourmet aloo, which is a cumin scented potato stew. Here we have baby red, also known as red creamers. So here we have a large cylinder of a salt water solution, and we are going to test the density. Now, theoretically, this Idaho russet will float, even though it's so big and heavy, and this will sink because it is a much denser potato with a higher water content. I don't know, I'm a skeptic. I really feel like this heavy ass potato is not going to float, but what do I know? Let's check it out. Oh, okay. <gasps> no. <laughs> oh my God. Holy shit, science is real. <laughs> Baby potatoes are literally just potatoes that have been picked before they are fully mature and fully grown, which means they're a little bit sweeter because the sugar also has not yet fully converted into starch. That also means that baby potatoes are more perishable compared to their mature counterparts. I think these would be great for roasting as well as for a moist heat cooking like potato salad because the starch won't expand as much so they'll really hold their shape. And you also have a really beautiful visual contrast with the red skin on the outside and then this creamy looking flesh on the inside. It's kind of like a pale yellow Hmm, earthy flavor. That's a little bit sweet. These are baby whites or white creamer potatoes. This is the white potato version of the baby reds. And it's something that I would also use to make potato salad. Actually, let's do that. So when you're cutting for potato salad, you just wanna make sure that they are consistent sizes. That way we'll get really nice consistent pieces that cook evenly. I'm thinking we'll do a German potato salad instead of a classic one. So we boiled our potatoes until they are tender. So you always wanna start your potatoes in cold water and let them come up to a boil with the water. And you always wanna add a little salt because you want the starch to soak in some seasoning instead of just throwing it on at the end. So first thing I'm gonna add is a couple heavy pinches of salt. We'll add a little bit of chopped onion. 
three tablespoons of grainy mustard, a little bit of chopped scallion for a milder onion flavor, some chopped dill, splash of vinegar, just to give us a little bit of acid, and olive oil. So this is not a mayonnaise-based potato salad like you might be used to. This is more the German style, which is typically served a little bit warm, and it's an oil base, not a mayonnaise base. And you see how the potatoes really keep their shape. They are not breaking apart and turning into a mess that's just like a solid mass of potato mush, which can be delicious, don't get me wrong, but if you really wanna have a beautiful presentation, you've got these nice little baby creamers that hold their shape and they're pretty bite size. Mm. That is pretty damn good. And that's it. That's literally all it is. It's super easy, very delicious. You have acid, you have herbs, you have texture, and most importantly, you have potato. So I know I said that there were two categories of potato, but what if I told you that there is a whole other category that I didn't even mention before? Would you be mad? We call them all-purpose potatoes. This is the German Butterball. It is a very versatile heirloom variety that is great for steaming, roasting, baking, and frying. It's massive. Super bright, super golden color. I really see why it's called a butter ball because the inside looks like a ball of butter. That is really delicious too. I think this would be great for a Palms Anna because you have a nice consistent size, beautiful deep yellow flesh, and the potato has just enough starch to hold the slices together. For Palms Anna, you wanna slice the potato relatively thinly and then you stack them and baste them with clarified butter on the outside. It is a truly delicious dish that's really easy to execute that the butter ball would be great for. Purple Peruvian, say that 10 times fast. This potato is purple all the way from the inside to the outside. The skin and the flesh both have a nice deep color. So anthocyanin is the pigment that creates the purple color in the potato. It is also an antioxidant. So purple potatoes are some of the healthiest varieties that you can eat. So if you boil purple potatoes too long, you'll start to lose some of the pigment. One has been just cooked in water. The other one we boiled with a little bit of apple cider vinegar to see if it would help retain that pigment. The one that's been cooked in vinegar has a much more saturated, vibrant interior color. This is beautiful. I mean, look at that. The acid really helped fix the pigment. So this is the Purple Viking. It has a really unique pink and purple flesh on the outside, but wait. While you'd think it looks like a purple Peruvian and would have purple pigment throughout, wrong. <laughs> it's a really cool contrast and has some of that dry kind of textured outside. It doesn't have the smooth, thin skin like a waxy potato, but it has the look of a waxy on the inside. It is so smooth, wow. It's a little firm. Oh. <laughs> this is Mr. Peter Wilcox, a very proper potato. This is also called the purple sun potato because it's got a bright yellow inside. Very sunshine, warm, bright, delicious. So it's got a nice thick purple skin on the outside that looks like a russet in terms of the texture but it has a smooth yellow interior that feels very creamy, kind of like that butter ball. You could use it for anything like a hash as well as a chowder. It has enough starch to really give you those crispy edges if you want to fry it, but it has enough of that waxy texture to hold together in a chowder. And now the Yukon Gold, well known for its versatility in cooking as well as its flavor profile. And I have to be honest, I've been holding out on you and saving the best for last is why the Yukon Gold is my absolute favorite potato. You can literally use it for pretty much anything you would use a russet for as well as anything you would use a waxy for. It has enough starch to make crispy fries and delicious mashed potatoes, but it also has enough of the waxy texture to hold its shape through a roast or boil. So instead of having two or three different kinds of potato at home, I usually just have a few Yukon Golds. Nice. Mm. That is just such a damn good potato. Oh my God. 
it's like a little sweet and a little creamy, a little buttery. So you don't have to add as much butter to it if you're making mashed potatoes because it already has some richness on its own. So we are gonna have a showdown against two other varieties and make mashed potatoes. My favorite, the Yukon Gold versus Idaho Russets and my new second favorite, the Pinto Gold. So I'm going to boil all three of these potatoes separately in water until they're tender all the way through. And we'll add a little bit of milk and butter. So we have our cooked russet potatoes. We're just gonna peel them first and then put them through a potato ricer. If you have one, they are definitely the best thing to use because they really help separate the potato and keep it from getting too clumped. We're just gonna keep it very simple. We have a little milk and butter and some salt. It's really all you need for mashed potatoes. And with your russets, you don't wanna work them too much because the more you work them, the more that starch will clump up and just get denser and denser. Mm. Very good. They taste earthy, very neutral potato flavor, very classic potato flavor. You don't get a lot of sweetness, but you get a lot of that earthiness. And again, you feel that starchy, almost gritty texture as you're eating it. But it is pretty tasty, you know? Tastes like my childhood. So we're gonna put these to the side and give our pintos a try. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Give them a little peel. Wow, the skins come off super easy. I like that. I'm really interested in the flavor as this is a newer potato. It's one that I have not really worked with. Oh my God, that looks so yellow. That is so awesome. The color on these is great. It's very classic to see like, you know, the traditional fluffy white mashed potatoes. It's like, it screams like Midwest where I'm from. But this is really something that I just wanna like dig into. Same mixture here. We just wanna taste the potato. But it's interesting, even though they went through the ricer, they don't seem to be as smooth as the russet. You can almost see like little, little pieces of potato still. Wow. Compared to the russet, it tastes like there is so, so much more butter in here. It's got a really heightened, rich, earthy flavor. Completely different. Mm. This is the kind of mash that like, I don't even know if I would want gravy on because it has so much flavor of its own. And last we have our Yukon Golds. I think these are gonna be my favorite because they usually are, but I'm not biased, totally open. Same milk and butter. We're gonna use the same folding motion that we did for the other two. It's really absorbing a lot of this liquid, almost like the russets did. The Pinto Golds didn't hold as much liquid, but the russets and the Yukon Golds, spongy. Mm. That just makes me so happy. <laughs> I'm not biased, but I'm a little biased. But don't take my word for it. Let's look at all three of them right next to each other. So to really get a look at the texture of these three different types of mash, I'm gonna give them a little whisk first, and then we're going to smear it on this sheet tray. So this is our Pinto Gold Mash. You can see all these little waxy potato globules that just refuse to really break down. Next up, we're gonna try the russet. It looks a lot smoother and it's definitely thicker. You still have some small pieces of potato starch that haven't completely broken down, but overall, it's a lot fluffier. It's like smearing a cloud back and forth. Now for the Yukon Golds. Much creamier than the Pinto Gold mashed potato. Not as fluffy and starchy as the russet, but also not gritty. The russet, as much as I love it, it does have that kind of gritty textured mouthfeel. These, you can see some of the particles of starch in them, but not nearly as much as with the Pinto Gold. The Pinto Gold almost wins just for novelty. The flavor on it is something I've never tried before. It's really sweet, but it's almost too sweet. I don't want my mashed potatoes to have that much residual flavor. I don't know, it's just like, against the natural order of potatoes. I want something that's creamy, slightly starchy, but not so starchy that it gives you a gritty mouthfeel. And for me, hands down, that is the Yukon Gold. 
Thank you so much for joining me on this magical potato adventure. I hope that this gives you all the confidence you need to be successful in your future potato endeavors.